Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Club Grayskull Roboto from Super 7. So here we are, our final six Club Grayskull action figures. These of course fit right in with your Masters of the Universe Classics figures, but they are based on the characters' appearances in the Filmation, He-Man, and the Masters of the Universe cartoon series. So we are gonna kick things off by looking at Roboto here. So as you can see, just like we've had in the past with our Club Grayskull figures, we've got this beautiful window box packaging that's got this awesome slip cover. The whole thing's got a Castle Grayskull motif. Looking at the back of the slip cover, we've got the He-Man and the Masters of the Universe logo. And removing that slip cover reveals this awesome window box where it's like inside the jaw bridge of Castle Grayskull. You can even see some inside of the castle detailing in the background behind the figure. It's very, very cool packaging. When we rotate it around to the backside, we've got an awesome image, some great artwork there of Roboto as he appeared in that classic cartoon series. And at the very bottom of the box, we even have a brand new bio for the Filmation version of Roboto. So let's go ahead and get this figure pulled out of the packaging and get a closer look at him. All right, we got Roboto outside of the packaging. If I bring in the tape measure, you can see that the figure stands right at the seven inch mark. Uh, so that's about the exact height that all of our figures in Club Grayskull, Masters of the Universe Classics typically stand. I will say that Roboto feels bigger and I, I just think it's because he's got like this bigger rounder head, uh, maybe the torso since it's kind of bubbled out a little bit. Something about him definitely makes him feel a little bit bigger, definitely in the upper body than some of the other figures uh, and you can kind of see that when you stand him side by side with some of the other characters. Uh, so this is another figure where he looks just like you remember. He looks like Roboto, but there is quite a few differences when comparing this animated version to the other version. And we'll really get a, a closer look at that side by side when we get to the comparison time segment later on. But first, I just want to talk about the, uh, the figure itself here just to go over all of the details. So, uh, some of the things about this figure that are worth noting is that he doesn't have the action features uh, or even articulation points to mimic the action features that you might remember from the vintage Roboto action figure. For example, uh, on that vintage figure and even on the classics version of this character, this red mouth guard thing was able to move up and down. It does not do that on this figure. It is part of the sculpt of the head here. Um, so you can see that he's got kind of that round head. He's got the blue slit for the eyes. He's got the red mouth guard. No added articulation there. It's just your standard articulation at the neck joint. Uh, the paint on the head is very flat. Uh, and you'll see that a lot. All the grays on here specifically are very flat. The reds don't appear quite as flat. Um, but a lot of these filmation figures have more the the flat colors used in the paint uh, because they're trying to mimic that more flat look of the cartoon series, uh, which was why they're less metallic-y and less shiny, less glossy, stuff like that. Um, so he does maintain the clear torso, which is one of those things that makes Roboto Roboto. It's the very iconic look for the character. And inside that clear torso, you can see his gears. Uh, he's got like a green gear, two purple gears, and a red gear. But again, no action feature, so those gears do not turn. We can turn his waist still, but you'll see that the gears inside do not turn. They are static, they stay in place. But it's still really cool that you can see through the figure there. Um, so as I mentioned, it's a bit more rounded. He's kind of got like this more bulbous body. Um, you know, on the vintage figure and even the classics version, it's a lot more straight and rectangular. This is rounded out, again, to look more the way it appeared in the cartoon series. And that really does kind of make him stand out. It gives him a bit of a different look. It's hard to explain, but without the jagged angles that we're typically seeing on Roboto action figures, this more rounded chest really does make him stand out a little bit. Now, here's one thing that's really strange with this guy. I noticed while I was holding him that he feels very, very lightweight. And I realized it's because of this clear torso, um, this clear plastic that's used here. Uh, of course, it's, it's not solid because it's got to be hollowed out for the gears and everything. It makes the entire figure feel very lightweight, like a lot more light than you would typically expect these figures to be because they usually have a nice kind of heavy weight to them. And he still feels solid on the legs and the arms. So he does still have weight. He stands on his own. He's not like super light, but it's noticeably different when you're holding them in your hands. So I think you're going to notice that as well. 
Um, the arms uh, are just kind of plugged into the sockets there. Uh, one thing I, I really looked this over, I wanted to make sure there was no cracking in the plastic. Uh, dating back to the Masters of the Universe Classics version of this figure from several years ago, he had a problem where he had a lot of cracks showing up at the seams. This one does not seem to have any cracks anywhere on there. Um, I, I know I, I remember missing that originally on that original Roboto figure, so I really wanted to make sure I didn't overlook that. Uh, the plastic seems fine. I don't seem to have any cracking or anything like that on the clear plastic here. So going back to those arms, uh, I wanted to kind of mention that they feel a bit loose. And it, not that they feel like they're going to fall out, but do you see how easy the arms turn here? This is surprising because the last several figures from Super 7 have had very, very tight joints. I mean, sometimes like so tight that you actually have to kind of work them out a little bit. And it's not like these are floppy. The arms are not floppy. The legs are not floppy. But they just feel a lot looser, specifically in those swivels, like the bicep and the thigh. Um, and I don't know if it's has something to do with the clear chest and it not gripping onto the pegs. I don't know how that would affect this. I have no idea. Uh, and I also don't know if that's going to be the same way for everybody's, but mine has noticeably loose joints. Now, again, he's still standing fine. He's still posing fine. They're not floppy, but they're quite a bit looser than I've seen on recent action figures. So why don't we go ahead and talk about the articulation while we are at that point. Uh, as I showed you the head, still on that same kind of ball joint that allows you to look up and down, turn slightly left and right. That is actually pretty tight there. Um, but the shoulders can go outwards. Uh, you can bend them down. You can see how like, uh, it's funny because it's like loose and like his bicep, like it's hard to turn the shoulder, because that's actually a little tighter there, but then the bicep gets like, I don't know, it's really strange. Um, anyway, soles of the bicep. You do have uh, the joints at the the elbows actually have the ratchets in there, so they feel a little bit tighter. And then you can swivel at the uh, hands. You'll notice on the right, he's got the claw, and you can see it's kind of coming off. It's because it's just on a peg. That is uh, interchangeable, so we'll come back to that. On the other side, you can swivel at his wrist, and he's got the hinge joint at the wrist there. Uh, obviously, nothing in the torso, but I showed you you can swivel at the waist. You got those ball like hinges at the thigh, so legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards, swivel. You do have nice uh, tight joints at the knees on this guy, just a single joint there. Uh, the ankles can kind of rock side to side, as well as move forwards and backwards, so a good range of motion there. So he really does fit in just fine with the articulation. I mean, the only thing he's really missing, obviously, is that ab crunch, uh, but he still poses fine. Uh, I don't really have any problems with it, aside from what I showed you with kind of like those really loose biceps. So, uh, the only accessories he comes with are interchangeable hand pieces. You'll notice that the claw is a lot more rounded. Um, you know, if we're talking about the vintage toy or the classics figure, again, it's got a lot more angles on it. This one is more meant to mimic what we saw in the animated series. This is removable just by popping it off the peg there. You can see it's just a straight peg, so it doesn't, like, clip into place or anything like that. It's not a ball joint. It actually just slides right off that little peg, and in its place, we've got two other accessories. Um, these are very much much like what we saw in the vintage toy and the classics figure. We've got a blaster. The best way to put these on is to kind of twist them. And you can see then they kind of get on there. They're nice and tight once they're on. Um, again, flat gray paint, just like on the helmet there. The front barrels of this gun are a little bit warped, but you can kind of straighten those out. So again, very similar to what we've seen before. The little double barrel gun so that he can blast his foes. Again, we'll give it a twist to kind of pop it off. You can hear the plastic kind of squeaking there. And in that place, we can uh, pop on his little axe, which again, definitely modeled after what we saw on the vintage toy there. So we can have him with that as a weapon as well. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Let's go ahead and stand this Roboto alongside the Masters of the Universe Classics Roboto action figure from a few years back, uh, which really shows you the difference between these. And again, it also kind of shows you the height difference with this new one, how he feels bigger and, uh, I don't know, buffer somehow. Uh, but you can really see how much more intricately detailed the Classics version was compared to this more simplistic design that it's meant to look like the cartoon series. And we'll go ahead and stand him alongside the vintage Roboto action figure just for fun, just so you can get that throwback to what he looked like when you were a kid compared to this version based on the cartoon series. And there you go, my friends. There is a look at Roboto. 
all in all, he's a fine figure. Um, to be perfectly honest, he's not jumping out at me as something extra exciting or extra fun. He's different enough looking in the cartoon that I can see why they wanted to do it. Um, again, he's smoother. He's rounder. He doesn't have those same angles and details of the other one. Uh, I loved the classics one so much because of all that extra added detail. And I get it. I know that these figures are supposed to be more simplistic to look like the cartoon. And maybe that is your preferred taste. And there's nothing wrong with that. He's a fine figure that I don't really have any real issues with. He's just certainly not one of the standouts as one of my favorite figures in this particular lineup. So this last six figures, the last wave of Club Grayskull was sold by pre-order only through Super 7's website. Uh, you might still be able to pick it up right now on the aftermarket at websites like BigBadToyStore.com. So happy hunting, my friends. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends.